properties that a pan needs for cooking is good conduction. But you don't want handles to be good conductors. So copper is one of the best conductors there is. And the steel that the handles are made of is not as good a conductor, so we're less likely to get burnt. Weather patterns are gigantic convection currents, and these storms, all they are, are convection currents in the air. And lastly, this is an infrared radiation picture of our Earth. This is during the southern hemisphere's summer. As you can see, the northern hemisphere is a bit colder at the minute than the southern hemisphere, and obviously it's coldest around the North Pole. This is heat transfer, the three ways that heat can be transferred, conduction, convection and radiation. So firstly, heat transfer by conduction. These, this is the particle arrangement for a very dense metal, something like lead. Now, this is a good conductor because when we apply some heat to, let's say, this end here, well, the particles near it, they start vibrating. And because they vibrate, they knock into the next one along, and they start that one vibrating. This starts the next one's vibrating, and the next one vibrating, and the next one's vibrating, and the next one's vibrating. So by contact, they pass on the kinetic energy, and pretty soon, the whole solid is hot. So the heat has conducted from the hot end here to the colder end here. Now, I said to you that copper is the best conductor. Copper is the best conductor. Well, it is certainly one of the very best conductors, but it's not as dense as lead. And so there's actually something else going along. When you heat it, there's something else in the material that moves as well. So when I heat this end, yes, the ions, the main part of the atom that make up the copper in the metallic bond, they start vibrating and they knock into the next and gradually each one's knocked into each other all the way until the whole bar is hot. But also, these are the little particles here. These are the free electrons. And that means exactly what it says. It means they're free. And they can zip along, transferring that heat. They start vibrating around very quickly from one end of the copper to the other. And this is an interesting thing, I think because this is the reason why copper is both the best electrical conductor and one of the best heat conductors as well. So we've got two things that increase the conductivity uh, of heat. We've got the density and we've got these free electrons. I'll perhaps just write that for you. So high density and free electrons. So it stands to reason then if it doesn't have high density or free electrons, it's not going to be a very good conductor. So here's an example of an insulator. Here I've just got, uh, it's any gas really, but let's just say it is air. And actually the particles in air are spread really far apart, so it's got a low density. And as you can see, there's no free electrons, so it is not a good conductor at all. I can apply heat to one side and yes, that heat will gradually conduct as these get a bit more excited, a bit more energy and then eventually one knocks into here and eventually one knocks into here and so on. But it takes an awful lot longer than the other two. But there is a different way that heat transfers in fluids like gases or liquids and that's what we're going to move on to now. So that was conduction and now we're going to talk about convection. I'll just give you a minute to soak up this nice uh, meme of a cat. That's a radiator, and we have them in most rooms, but they're poorly named because they don't spread out the heat. They don't transfer heat to the air by radiation. They transfer heat by convection. And actually, we should call them convection heaters. Right, well, you need to know something about a convection heater and how it works. Okay, well, it works by heating the air near it. Okay, the air near it expands. And remember, say it's the air that expands, not the particles that expand. Air expands and becomes less dense. 
Now, in any fluid, that is a gas or a liquid, less dense things float. Okay, so the less dense air rises. This displaces the cooler air. and causes what we know as a convection current. Okay, so I'm going to show this in uh, arrows now. Let's imagine this entire blackboard is our uh, room. This is the corner of it. So the air around it has heated it's expanded, so it's become less dense, so it has risen. Now actually what's going to happen is it's going to push away the cooler air above it and therefore it's going to be replaced by warm air and the warm air is going to spread out around the room. It displaces the colder air that was there before. And then the cold air or the air that was warm eventually cools down a little bit and it sinks. So the cold air falls, okay? Cold air falls and it's back around the room, eventually coming back to where the radiator is. It, in, in turn, itself is heated and the current keeps going until the whole air in the room has reached well, it would reach the same temperature as the radiator if it was allowed to continue for long enough. So next we're going to talk about radiation, that is infrared radiation. Now infrared is the only one that doesn't need particles to travel. So here we are in the vacuum of space. Uh, this is a vacuum, there's no particles here whatsoever. Now. How then does heat reach us from the sun? Well, it has got to go here somewhere, hasn't it? So there's Earth and here's the sun. Well, the answer is it reaches us as infrared. Okay, it's not quite red. It's like light, but it is actually a longer wavelength than visible light. It is heat radiation. Okay, it's a wave and it can travel through the vacuum of space. It does not require particles to travel. Conduction required particles to pass from one part of a solid to another. Convection required particles to allow that current within the fluid. But radiation is electromagnetic uh, infrared radiation. Therefore, no particles needed and it will travel through empty space. There's a couple of other facts that you need to know about infrared. All objects um, emit infrared, but hotter objects emit more infrared. But it doesn't only depend upon their temperature. Also, the colour of the object has something to say about how much is absorbed or emitted of infrared. So here I'm um, going to take two test tubes and we'll do a quick experiment. I'm going to fill them both with the same amount of water and put a thermometer in so we can measure the temperature. But one I'm going to cover with black paper and the other I'm going to cover with aluminium foil. So firstly, we're going to talk about absorption. Now, absorption means taking in heat. Okay, in this case it means heat. Absorption. Okay. So this light bulb is a very good source of infrared. So although it gives out light, it also, in fact, it gives out more in the infrared wavelengths. So if they're the same distance apart, the same amount of infrared is going to fall on the black one as on the silver one. Now if I were to measure those temperatures, I would notice that the black one's temperature becomes much higher. So we say this dark and matte surface, means the opposite of shiny, dull, absorbs more than this light and shiny surface can say that, um, sorry, <coughs> excuse me, you can say that the heat reflects from this light and shiny surface, 
um, but do not say bounce and do not also say attracts when you mean absorb you must use those specific keywords well let's say we've heated them both up to the same temperature let's say they're both at the same temperature well which one will emit more which one will do most emission is it the dark matte one or is it the light and shiny one well actually it's the same and again the dark matte one emits more infrared than the light and shiny one emits quite a lot more actually so we say dark and matte are good absorbers and good emitters of infrared and light and shiny are poor absorbers and poor emitters of infrared pretty easy to remember that I think but make sure you do this is a really typical explain question which asks you to put together your understanding of conduction, convection and radiation into one context and this is the vacuum flask which can be used to either keep drinks hot or keep them cold. It's basically trying to reduce the energy transfer from the inside to the outside or from the outside to the in. So it has kind of three main features. There is obviously a lid on the top and it normally talks about a plastic rubber insulator stopper it also has silvered inside surfaces okay that means that um, they are light and shiny and also the, the outside surface would be silvered as well so I'll just put silvered uh, surfaces rather than making a, a distinction between them silvered surfaces and lastly and most importantly really there is the vacuum which means no particles um, between two layers of gas of glass sorry Okay, now you have to kind of match up which one goes with which. So, uh, which one do you think convection stops? Uh, is stopped by or is limited by? Which one do you think conduction is limited by? Which one do you think radiation is limited by? You might want to just pause now, have a little think or make a little note. This might be a six mark question really, in which case you'd need to say which one is stopped by which and why. Explain each part. Well, um, mainly the plastic stopper it limits convection remember convection says that hot fluids rise it also limits conduction somewhat but the main one will be it limited limits convection okay it uh, silvered surfaces well the last slide we talked about light and shiny surfaces are poor emitters of infrared so this reduces radiation so initially just matching each one I suggest you really remember which one does which uh, light and shiny surfaces they are poor emitters It would be emitters as long as it was a hot drink inside. Infrared. 
then vacuum, well, there's no particles between the two layers of glass, so there can be no conduction or very little conduction. So it limits conduction. Explain that. Well, conduction requires particles to travel. Okay, well, um, I hope that helped you understand that part. As ever, if you liked that, if you thought that was useful, then go ahead and subscribe. I really want my videos to be as useful to as many people as possible. So if you could share this video or like it, that would be a great help as well. Thank you.